A very warm, warm welcome back to the Nutrition Collective events. We are an educational platform focusing on providing healthcare practitioners with cutting edge knowledge around chronic disease. I am Lucia and I'm really looking forward to interviewing Professor Walter Longo. He's a professor of gerontology and biological sciences and the director of the Longevity Institute at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, which is one of the leading centers for research on aging and age-related disease. Dr. Longo is also the director of the Longevity and Cancer Program at the Institute of Molecular Oncology in Milan, in Italy. Today, with this interview, we're going to look at some key areas of this research of uh, the longevity diet and the fast mimicking diet and their impact on prevention on uh, chronic disease. And also, we're going to ask some highlights on his work for his no-profit foundations. So welcome, Walter. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, shall we start immediately? We already have some questions. We are quite familiar with the Mediterranean diet, but we know that you have researched a lot and specialized in the longevity diet. Can you please explain us uh, what uh, are the differences between those two diets and the highlights of those two diets? The Mediterranean diet obviously is based on um, on lots of things, but uh, um, started with Enzo Keys and and uh, based on the Southern Italian, uh, particularly Campania uh, group of uh, people in Campania and the way they e e used to eat, they don't eat like that anymore. And and uh, it's similar; it's got a lot of similarities with the longevity diet. So a lot of legumes. Uh, and uh, a lot of vegetable. Uh, it's got differences from with the longevity diet. Uh, for example, the longevity diet is low on fruit. The Mediterranean diet is high on fruit. Uh, uh, the Mediterranean diet doesn't really have age-specific uh, changes. The longevity diet uh, uh, changes uh, very much between, let's say, the um, 0 and 20, 20 and, and 65, 70, 70 and, and above. Um, and, um, and so the longevity diet is, is more based on, on, uh, of course, the, the Mediterranean diet is based on that. And what uh, some people used to eat in the Mediterranean area, the longevity diet is based on fine pillars. And so it, that's just the centenarians and not just of that part of southern Italy, but Okinawa and Loma Linda and, and lots of places around the world. All of that represent one pillar. Then there's four more pillars. And, uh, um, yeah, so defining, for example, the longevity diet um, includes a 12 hours time restricted eating, 12 hours fasting, 12 hours eating, it includes a fasting making diet uh, two or three times a year, um, includes a, um, a, a specific um, um, fish uh, and not on any source of animal proteins. I mean, the Mediterranean diet is much more, uh, um, you know, you can have a fairly high amount of meat. Uh, um, based on most definitions and the meat can be red and white and, 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 and fish, but it's low, but it's still, um, you know, in, in the longevity diet, there is no red meat. There is no white meat. Uh, only fish is allowed uh, a few times a week. Um, yeah. So it, it's, it's quite different, although there are certainly, uh, lots of, uh, lots of things in common. Now, talking about those diets, you mentioned the fast mimicking diet, which I know it's a diet that you researched a lot. And I also wanted to ask you, what prompted you to research uh, the fast mimicking diet and uh, what benefits it can have on the prevention of chronic diseases such as diabetes, cancer and metabolic syndrome? And it also has an impact on fertility following a fast mimicking diet? Yes, so the fasting making diet, uh, um, it, I was a student of Roy Walford back, you know, 30 years ago, actually. And, uh, and Roy was, um, was the leading uh, person in the planet for nutrition and longevity back then. And, um, and he was working on something called, called calorie restriction. And, and calorie restriction, um, had lots of benefits and lots of problems. Right? So well, calorie restriction is, is, uh, about 25% less calories than normal and not 25% less than excess, but 25% less than normal. So it's quite really low calorie intake. And, and, and Walford has shown extraordinary effects for this, uh, um, calorie restriction, but also extraordinary problems. Let's say the weight loss, muscle uh, loss, etc., etc. Yeah. So the fasting making diet is the 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 answer to that. 
And, um, and, and so the question was, is it possible that we can intervene and fast people, mice first, and then people for just say five days every month or so? And that will have a, an effect carrying over into the, the days where you may even have a bad Western diet. And um, yeah, so that, that there was the gamble and first it was water only fasting, then it became fasting mimicking why we, what we started doing trials with um, cancer patients. And the cancer patient at USC Norris Cancer Center did not want to do water only fasting. And so um, then we went to the National Institute of Health, of Health uh, and asked for funding for can we come up with a diet that people can eat and have the same effects as fasting, right? And that's what the, the fasting making diet. So it's trying to solve two problems. One, it, it does not want to impose to people daily changes because most people are not going to do daily changes long term. It doesn't mean that we don't try. Of course, the longevity diet tries very hard, but, you know, so it tries to eliminate that. And then it tries to eliminate the fasting part, even in those five days, so that people can, you know, have a reasonable amount of food and, and yet get the benefits of fasting. And um, yeah, so it works. So we now have uh, about maybe 10 clinical trials, of many on cancer, some on diabetes and and uh, pre-diabetes, et cetera. And so it, the data um, is uh, very promising for cancer, but also uh, starting to get to the conclusive level for diabetes and pre-diabetes uh, with maybe four trials all showing the same thing, uh, reduction of A1C, reduction of fasting glucose, um, and, um, and so, um, and, and reduction of uh, regression of the, the, the diabetes, right? So now, now all the trials have shown the same that drug uh, use is reduced by patients, uh, diabetic patients that are, you know, on um, four, six, and or 12 cycles of the fasting making diet. All, all trials are showing the same. Um, and so, yeah, very promising for, for diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Um, and metabolic syndrome, um, and uh, but also promising for cancer and and for and for people that just want to be healthy and uh, and maybe uh, we haven't published it yet on biological age, but that's coming up. Uh, you know the effect of fasting mimicking diet on, on on the biological age of people that have done it. Wow, this is so interesting. Thank you very much. And so what do you believe is the most dietary, uh, valuable dietary intervention for the prevention of chronic disease? Is the fast mimicking diet? It's having a Mediterranean style dietary regime. It's the longevity diet. What would you recommend? Yeah, obviously, uh, I, um, I, uh, because the Mediterranean diet is considered within the longevity diet, I, I recommend the longevity diet and, and the fasting making diet is also inside of the longevity diet. So longevity diet, I mean, diet, of course, is a technical term. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, e eating differently to lose weight, but it has to do with, uh, you know, everything you eat. So, uh, what is, uh, what, what should that be? And that should be the longevity diet, uh, based on, on lots and lots of studies. Uh, many mine but but many uh, by lots of other groups um and so the longevity diet considers epidemiological data um and it considers clinical studies and it considers basic research um and and then it considers again uh, centenarian studies from all over the world you know the okinawa loma linda um, calabria sardinia uh, yeah, so all of that is considered. So I think we need to sort of move, move, uh, um, move to a, a, a smarter, more individualized uh, idea of diet in the Mediterranean diet. I mean, the Mediterranean diet, you know, I, like the calorie restriction is simple ideas are good and bad. You know, they, 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 they tend to, uh, uh, do uh, be very good. And, and, and of course, it's very good to be on a Mediterranean diet. But we also just finished a trial showing that within seven months of the Mediterranean diet, the average person lost seven pounds of, of muscle mass, five pounds of muscle mass yeah. uh, of lean body mass. Right. So, I mean, yeah, this is just one example of, of how just by going to an area of Italy and saying this is the best diet in the world, you're going to get good and you're going to get bad. Right. And uh, and uh, yeah, the longevity diet is trying to 
move away from from ideas like that and, and move into well exactly what are we talking about you know what is the level of protein what is the level of amino acid within the the proteins that uh at each age and it's going to be beneficial to that person and of course very soon it's going to be for each person right not just at each age so we have clinics in Milan and Los Angeles for the foundation and, and everything is personalized. So everybody gets a different, uh, a treatment, you know, and, um, and it should be like that, right? Because, uh, uh, yeah. So, so I think it's an evolution of a lot of these old ideas. You know? And the last question on the diets is because we mentioned um, talking about those diets and obviously you said Mediterranean or longevity and we're all thinking about the beautiful produce that it's in the Mediterranean island area or Okinawa or California, but what if as practitioners we want to advise a longevity diet or a Mediterranean diet in the UK or in the US or more broadly worldwide, would you recommend some modifications? There are some dietary products that, you know, maybe are not easy to find in the UK because we are, they don't grow. How can we do it? first of all the longevity diet that was written in california right so um and uh and it was written with in mind you know my my time in chicago and my time in dallas uh places that probably don't have much a lot of we don't have big differences with the uk right let's say they have differences but not big differences so certainly between california chicago and dallas a lot of the ingredients that you will see on the table of, of, of in UK uh, cities uh, will be represented, and um, yeah, so it was never it was never meant to be a, a, an Italian uh, a diet. Uh, it was meant to be a uh, as mentioned a diet for the world, and uh, and that's why it takes from from Loma Linda. It takes from Okinawa, Loma Linda, California. It takes from Okinawa. It takes from, uh, you know, Italy, it takes from, uh, you know, everywhere that we could get information for, from, you know, including epidemiological studies, many of which were done in the UK. Um, so, yeah, so it's not about um, a particular ingredient. It's a particular category of ingredients. So it's not about which vegetable, but vegetables, right? So, uh, or, or it's not about which fruit, but fruit. In general, and uh, and of course, uh, you know, the dietitian or the nutritionist in each country is going to have to uh, um, come up with uh, the different versions. Thank you very much, Walter. And now, since you mentioned before about your foundations in Milan and um, California. I know that in Milan, it's the Walter Longo Foundation, and in the US, you have Create Cures. Uh, would you tell us a bit more about why you decided to found them, and what are the main activities of these non-profit foundations? Yes, yeah, so I, I found them based on, uh, on what I wrote in the book, which is I didn't think that in the universities um, we uh, yet have this... Uh, multidisciplinary team that involves a nutritionist, a molecular biologist, a physician. And I, I thought that um, in part or a lot because I was doing that, right? I was forming teams, let's say with the oncologists, with the cardiologists, with the endocrinologists, as we move, we have many, I think we have about 30 clinical trials running right now. And so with every trial, we we form this team and so i have the dietitians or the phd nutritionist i'm involved and then the, we have the physician we have the maybe the the physician that are expert in nutrition then we have the physician that is specialized and uh and i and and as we move forward in the clinical trial we see how powerful that is like when we're together it's just a completely uh different service and and i thought that's amazing that we don't have that right that the that we can build it for the clinical trial, but nobody gets to have that team uh, uh, strategizing, right? So uh, what do you do and why? And and um, yeah, so th that's what the foundation clinics do, um, you know, and now they see about 400 patients a month uh, between Los Angeles and Milan, and a lot, maybe half of it is cancer, and the other half is, is lots of other things. 
And uh, yeah, so very proud of, of, of that and the way it's working. It's growing very rapidly and we're starting to get a lot of interest from, from donors uh, to keep it going because of course it's expensive, right? So to have this team, I mean, people deserve it, but who's going to pay for it? And uh, um, yeah, so I, I think eventually it'd be nice if, if governments pay for it, but uh, uh, thus far, um, you know, we, we rely on, uh, on donations and, and on my books and, and you know, the, the, the profits from the book uh, go there and, um, and on donations and also, of course, patients pay when they can afford it, they don't pay if they cannot afford it. And uh, yeah, so I think it's um, it's uh, it's going well. Yeah, and you mentioned books, and I know that now it's just been translated in English, the Longevity Diets book, and it's been recently launched uh, in the UK. Can you tell us a bit about this book? Well, no, the Longevity Diet has actually been in the UK since uh, 2018, uh and and in the us since 2018 yeah so it's been around and uh has sold a lot of copies um you know um hopefully it'll sell some more and uh a hundred percent of my part goes to the foundations and hopefully soon enough we'll have a, a foundation in london uh clinic in london we have now we just opened in rome so i have milan rome and los angeles and so yeah it'd be, it'd be great so if anybody's interested in uh in helping us uh, build it, uh, we, we would love to uh, to have one in London. But yeah, the longevity diet is it's really about, you know, 30 years of work uh, of my work and the work of many, many people uh, that I had the, the, the pleasure to wor working with and collaborating with. And, and um, yeah, so I, at some point after maybe 25 years of doing this, I felt Okay, now I think I I, um, I I know enough to to put it together in a way that uh, in a five pillar based way that I felt um, would not change in the next would not change very much right in in in, in the next five ten years um, and and that's why I wrote it and, and now it's been five years uh, was well, actually seven years since the Italian version and five years since the English version. And uh, I have to say, I wouldn't, I would change very little. I would change a few things, but not, not very much. Okay. That's so interesting. And which other books has your foundation published? Well, now there's an English version of the, the longevity stable. And, um, and that's a, a little bit of a fundraising effort, but it's a lot of recipes from all over Italy. Um, and, um, and, uh, that we felt the people love to eat, uh, but uh, so they're, they're very tasty and, uh, and yet they, they match very well the longevity diet. Uh, and uh, I, I thought it was a, a good effort by uh, my team, my foundation team to uh, to come up with over 300 recipes. And and again, it's a little bit of a fundraising. Uh, um, it, it's, it's less scientific than the first book and, and much more about, you know, how do I... Uh, how do I eat like that? Again, you know, people in the UK probably have to make adjustment based on what they like and uh, hopefully working with a, with a dietitian or nutritionist to, uh, to get there. Perfect. Thank you very much, Walter. It's been great talking to you and have insights about your research on diet, your foundation works and your publications. Thank you very much again. And uh, I also want to thank you, everybody that's been uh, watching us. And we hope we can see you in the future for our Nutrition Collective events. Please check out our website, www.nutritioncollective.co.uk for future events, webinars and masterclasses. And again, thank you very much, Walter. Thank you. Thank you.